So what I would like to do, so sorry for that interruption, is do a mini support group today in about 15, 20 minutes that we have. So I want to start kind of taking everyone's emotional temperature. So if you're not too shy, go ahead and post a comment. You know, how are you doing? If you were to say a zero is, I am really struggling. My pain is, is bad. My anxiety is bad. Uh, finances, family stressors, marital stressors, parenting stressors, fears about staying well or already have gone through someone being sick who's close to me or through being sick myself. So that would be a zero to 10, kind of best day ever. I'm really well, coping well. Um, let me just kind of get a few temperature readings. If anyone's not shy and you want to share how you're doing, I would love to see kind of what you have to say. So one reason that I wanted to see how everyone was doing today is I a reading post on our American Migraine Foundation Move Against Migraine page, which is a page of um, more than 26,000 people living with migraine talking to each other. And if you've never checked it out, it's a really wonderful space to share ideas, get support, get resources, and it's moderated by wonderful um, uh, patient advocates who a lot of them have medical or mental health backgrounds themselves, and they do a really nice job of moderating. So I've been watching and reading posts on the Move Against Migraine page, and I've noticed a lot of people are talking about um, feeling triggered. I've seen posts about people saying they have a lot of anxiety about their uh, treatments maybe being discontinued or not being able to get in to see their healthcare professional to get their usual treatments. Um, of course, there's a lot of worries about finances, jobs, um, stressors of, of working from home and shelter in place. And some people have been talking about either new feeling of depression or anxiety or already existing depression and anxiety being worsened or triggered. And also that's something that can happen for someone who has a history of trauma or PTSD that going through an extended prolonged stress like this might be re-triggering. So I've seen quite a few posts from people talking about feeling re-triggered emotionally with worsening anxiety, new or worsening panic attacks, um, new or worsening insomnia. Now let me take a little quick break here and see what people are saying in the comments. Um, okay, so thank you. So Vivian said, I don't have a migraine today, but my anxiety is off the charts. And that's exactly what we're seeing, you know, literally thousands and probably around the world, millions of people, probably billions of people feeling around the world. There's a lot of reasons to be anxious right now. We don't know what to expect in the future. We have a lot of unpredictability and unknown information, and all of that creates anxiety. And as we look at answers on traditional media and social media, we're seeing conflicting information. All of that creates anxiety as well. Um, a couple other people are writing in um, saying, hi, Julie. Hi from Utah. Um, I have a migraine today and a lot of anxiety. And again, that's very much what I, what I would expect as we're all going through this time of uncertainty, a time of of fear when um, quite scary and dangerous things are happening with, with people's health as well as economics and finances and, and just the stressors of sheltering in place together. So what are some things that we can do for the anxiety? A lot of the things that really help regulate migraine help anxiety. So some of the lifestyle um, habits that we stress that are important in migraine include those seeds. Dr. Amal Starling last week talked about the seeds for migraine success. One of them is sleep. Now more than ever, we want to make sure that we're getting enough sleep that's restorative and that we keep a regular sleep schedule at the same time going to sleep every night, waking up every morning. Now I know you really have families. You all just heard my four-year-old knocking on the door in the middle of this, uh, this podcast. <laughs> 
I know that these things are not as, as easily said, as, you know, as easily done as they are said, but sleep is an important one right now. Sleep regulates our nervous system. Regular sleep cycles help with mind management and they do help with anxiety. Also, we want to think about what's in our control. So a little bit like the AA Serenity Prayer, which has this great concept of the, you know, the wisdom to know what is without of our control and let that go versus think about what's within our control and try to control that. And some things might be carving out even a little bit of time every day for something enjoyable, something pleasant, um, something that's restorative for you, a little bit of personal time. And again, that might not be easy, depending on what your shelter in place or your current home situation looks like. It might be easy to make that time, but it's really important. Even if you only had a few minutes to play your favorite song, to do a very short mindfulness meditation or relaxation exercise, to um, engage in any activity that's calming to your anxiety and calming to your body is a great benefit. Also the basics, we need to think about eating healthy, staying hydrated, and we really want to limit as much as possible the amount of media right now that we're watching that's anxiety producing. So I would recommend choose the news that you like, watch, five to 10 minutes of the overview or the highlights, and then go ahead and turn it off because right now you don't have all the answers and spending time listening to all the possibilities can be really, really stressful and triggering for many people. I see a lot of comments coming in. I'm so glad. So, um, so uh, Cara Lee is saying, I've had one for two days. I have Botox injections and take Amovig shots. And she's also saying my sleep is off so bad. And Vivian's saying I do try and stay away from the media. And Vivian's also saying I'm having problems sleeping. So we're going to do in just a couple minutes a relaxation exercise. And for a lot of people, sleeping challenges may have to do with that constant internal dialogue, those worries, those stressors, those things that stay on our mind that can really interfere with sleep. There's some other things that can interfere with sleep that are really simple. Is the room too bright? Is it too loud? Is it too hot? Anything in your environment that you can make more comfortable, that's an easy fix. You certainly want to do those things. Um, it can also be disrupted by pain due to migraine, due to other types of pain. It could be disrupted by hormones, certainly. Um, we all know that if you're if you've been pregnant, if you're going through menopause, all those sorts of hormones disrupt sleep, and many other things, medications can disrupt sleep. So if this is a chronic problem, please talk with your doctor about seeing if you might be doing anything or taking anything which would disrupt sleep. But if in fact it's some of the worries and anxieties that are on our mind right now, a couple things that really help is limiting media exposure and limiting screen time, especially before bed. And then trying something that is calming and distracting. And so that might be a relaxation exercise for you. It might be prayer if that's something important in your life. It might be a audio book that's not too exciting so that you can turn off that internal dialogue that we all have that keeps us worried and keeps us alert and awake and let your mind and body quiet down. That's really our goal. Same thing for middle of the night awakenings. If stress or pain or we don't even know what, whatever wakes you up in the middle of the night, we want to again quiet the mind, quiet the body. If possible, stay in bed. Don't expose yourself to bright light unless you need to use the restroom or get a drink of water. Try to keep the lights down when you do that. Get back into bed and Again, practice any of these activities that distract your mind from the worries, whether it is, again, a, a meditation, listening to a guided imagery, or an audiobook that's not very exciting, something calming enough that, that you could fall asleep during it, and turn off those thoughts. So when we do a relaxation exercise in just a few 
few minutes. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start with trying to take the worries that we have in our mind and wrap them up in a box and put them up on the shelf. And this is a relaxation exercise that incorporates a little bit of hypnotic suggestion. So telling your mind what you want it to do to control your body. So we'll do that in just a minute to give you an idea of what that like. And if you like that, maybe that's something you can try if you're waking up in the middle of the night or having a hard time being asleep. And so Sharon says, I'm concerned about my city starting to open up. And I am too, and I think we all are. Of course, this is a major worry that's on all of our mind right now. The governments and citizens are trying to balance protecting people's health versus protecting society and economics and jobs. And this is a really, really challenging question about how to best go about that. As much as you have the ability to make choices that you're comfortable with, please do that. Go with your gut, go with your instinct. If you feel that you would like to continue sheltering in place and you have the ability to do that financially and um, and you don't have to be called into work and you're not an essential employee who's required to be there, you have the choice to stay at home. If you don't have that choice right now, you might have increased anxiety because you are in essence being called to go out um, into situations that might feel more dangerous. And so in that in that case, what can you do to feel like you have a little more control over your health and well-being? It might be trying to have as much personal protective equipment as you can, whether that is masks or hand washing or hand sanitizer or limiting your trips out as much as possible. If you must be in the workplace, talk to your supervisor about any precautions that can be taken to engage in physical distancing to clean and sanitize spaces that you're working in, um, to wear personal protective equipment, to manage the anxiety, of course, the appropriate fear that we all have about contracting COVID-19. We want to think about what is within our control. What do we have the ability to do and, and, and do those things, try and engage in those things. So I wish we had much longer today, and we are going to have another podcast where we're talking about stress, anxiety, and coping again in about two weeks. So we will continue this conversation. Um, but a great place to get more support, again, the American Migraine Foundation's Move Against Migraine Facebook group. Um, some people may have a therapist that they've worked with previously or currently, and that may be a good person to reach out to. Or if you feel like, Anxiety, depression, panic attacks are becoming uh, unmanageable on your own. Please do talk to your primary care doctor, or reach out to a mental health psychologist, mental health worker, therapist, social worker, and get help. Um, there are all sorts of opportunities right now for help and support. I've seen um, free hotlines and warm lines um, in across the country that, that people can call into. Um, there's also both free and fairly low cost online therapy versions, including using your phone or using uh, telehealth, using um, so either smartphone based apps where you text or you use, use phone calls or using telehealth. So there's a lot of resources out to try and connect mental health professionals with people who'd like to talk to them right now. And please don't be afraid or embarrassed to reach out for help. This is undoubtedly one of the most difficult situations most of us have ever been in in our lives. Um, probably the top handful for most people of most stressful and a long-term prolonged stressful experience. Please feel that if you're feeling stress, anxiety, depression, panic, worry, you're not alone. This is a normal human response to the love of stress that we're all going through together. So please know 
that we all feel it, I feel it, you feel it, and that this is a normal response to going through a trauma at this level. So in the last few minutes, I want to engage in a relaxation exercise. Again, I'm going to start with something a little bit different. I'm going to do a um, go into your mind and, and take those worries and thoughts and wrap them up in a box and put them up on a shelf. And then we'll go back to our relaxation. And let's see if this is something that if you're having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep or even having panic or anxiety attacks, then you might be able to try this technique and see if it helps calm that anxiety a little. So let's start by getting comfortable. You can stay in your chair. You can lay on a bed, the floor, your couch, whatever you want to do. Do a little bit of any kind of stretching that feels comfortable as long as you feel the uh, in your neck and shoulders and spinal cord, as long as there's no pre-existing conditions there that you should not stretch or move your, your neck. Um, but as long as you are able to do that comfortably, let's gently put one hand on the side of your head, gently get a little stretch to the side. Let's switch over to the other side, very gentle. Again, if you have headache or any discomfort right now and don't want to do this, please don't or ask your doctor first. Let's stretch up our arms in the air. And while we've got our arms up in the air, this is a great time to do some deep breathing because our lungs are already expanded. So we're going to breathe in through the nose, really fill up the lungs, hold it for a moment, and we're going to do a big exhale through the mouth. Now gently open up, let your arms kind of fall back. If you're on the floor, kind of fall, fall straight out, floor or bed, over, just let them open. Gently look towards the ceiling. Feel a lovely opening stretch coming through the front of your body. Now, bring it all back. Put your hands somewhere comfortable on your lap, on the floor, on the arms of your chair. Let your eyes drift closed if you're comfortable with that. And let's breathe in through those. One, two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Keep that cycle going. If that's a little slow, please feel free to speed up to whatever pace is comfortable for you. Just keep the pattern of a deep inhale through the nose, a brief hold, a lovely exhale through the mouth. Without stress, tension, let it all go. A Breathe, hold, and then again a big exhale, inhale the nose, hold, and then exhale. Very good. Now following that breathing, notice that your body starts to become more and more comfortable and relaxed with each breath. Breathing in oxygen and wellness, breathing out worries and stress, breathing in health and healing, breathing out pain and tension. Good. With each breath in, your body starts to feel more and more comfortable and relaxed. And now, moving your body for a moment, you're going to travel up inside your brain. You're going to imagine you've shrunk into a tiny person inside your brain, and you are the controller the brain. You know how to get into the control room. You've entered the control room of your brain. Imagine what it looks like. Does it look like computer screens? Does it look like there's knobs and dials and, and various switches you turn on and off? Take a moment, look all around the control room in your brain, and you know how to control everything because this is your brain, 
is your body and you are the expert. Now find the place in this control room that controls your thoughts about worries and anxieties and stress related to what is going on right now. And gather up all of those thoughts, those worries, those things that come to you in the middle of the night, those worries that you might have right now. Gather them all up and we're going to put them all inside a box. Once they're inside, you're going to close it up, maybe lock it up or tape it up, whatever you need to do. And you're going to put it high on the shelf, a place that you see it, a place that you know and you can return to when you need to come get these thoughts. But for now, you're going to just put it up on the shelf. You've acknowledged that they're there, but you're putting them aside. And now return your focus back to the control room in your mind. Notice whatever place that stress, tension, worry is controlled, and just turn it down a little bit. It might be something that you do with a keyboard and a computer. It might be a knob or a lever that you turn down, but just go ahead and turn it down your level of worry, your level of anxiety, turn it down a couple notches. You know that it might not stay. You may have to come back here and do it again over and over, but at least for now, turn down the worry. And while you're here in your control room, if you also want to take a minute and turn down the controls that manage headache, pain, migraine pain or symptoms or any other body pain, turn those controls down too. Very good. Now go ahead and close everything, log out, turn off the lights, do whatever you need to do. We're going to back away from the control room exit out the door and lock the door. You know you can come back here whenever you want, but for now we're going to leave it as it is. We're going to float outside your body, and for a few minutes we're just going to imagine it is a perfect summer day, and you are standing on a white sand beach of a tropical island. We don't know how you got here, just magically transported, but you are completely safe and comfortable. And take a moment and look at the turquoise water out in front of you and the bright blue sky overhead. And feel the lovely warmth of the sun on your face and your arms, your hands and your feet. Enjoy the feeling of the fine, soft sand underneath your feet. And as you take a big inhale, smell the salty scent of the ocean. As you exhale, exhale out, exhale out stress and tension. Enjoying this beautiful sea around you. Breathing in peace and beauty. Breathing out negativity and worry. With each breath in, you continue to feel more and more peaceful and calm, safe and relaxed. Very good. Now, that was very short relaxation. So if you would like to continue this relaxation, I invite you to find a place to lay down on this tropical beach, maybe a hammock in the shade, or maybe a lounge chair under an umbrella, and continue to enjoy the feelings of warmth, peace, and relaxation for as long as you choose. Or you can come back to this image 
any time you choose in the future. For those of you who need to wake up and go about your day, I'm going to count backwards from three down to one, leaving your eyes closed. Go ahead and wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Three, and leaving your eyes closed. Start to notice the feelings of the chair or bed or floor beneath you, the sounds around you, and two. And before you open your eyes, do any stretch you'd like to do, just like when you wake up in the morning. And one. When you're ready, go. Go ahead and open your eyes. And you can continue on with your day. Feeling centered and relaxed. Strong and healthy. Thank you for joining me today. These are indeed really scary, stressful, and unpredictable times. Try to control what you can and try to let go of what you can't. And know that all the feelings that everyone mentioned are completely understandable, normal, and healthy responses to a very trying situation. And we're really all in this together. We're all experiencing these same feelings. So the best thing to do is continue to care for yourself, care for your loved ones, and think about all of the important healthy lifestyle habits for living well with migraine. It will also help us live well through this pandemic. Sleep, stress management, staying hydrated, eating healthy, and being gentle on yourself. I wish you well and I'll see you back next week here for Weekly Wellness. We'll have another topic by another presenter and we look forward to seeing you again. Namaste.